Hi everybody. This is Patty, the Tinkerer's wife. Get better seated here. There you go. Um, and uh, here at Tinkerer's Paradise in the living room. I didn't want to do a video outside today, though there's things I could share about because it's been kind of nasty weather. You know that fall, um, summer to fall weather that comes and goes and you never know what it's going to do in the next hour or two. So we've got that too here, folks. Anyway, I have some books I've been wanting to share with you. These are some of my favorites. Uh, they show a little bit more of the romantic side of gardening and also uh, offer some practical tips in the telling of their stories. So let me, let me get started here. One that has been a favorite for many, many years is this little book here called An Island Garden by Celia Thaxter. This is a classic. She's a New England poet uh, and is best remembered for um, the chronicle of, her, uh, chronicle of her adventures in the garden on the windswept um, coast of New Hampshire where she lived. This is highly recommended, especially if you love doing flowers um, and you love that cottage style gardening. There's a plate of an illustration of her garden. This is an easy book to find um, and it is a really wonderful and delightful read. It has a lot of her tips and tricks that she did so you'll find it very practical and many 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 of these plants are familiar with, to us today. Uh, sometimes marketing people want to make it seem like this is a new plant or isn't this wonderful and like they've they've got the the main line on it when really the plants have been around for a very long time when i was working at the zimmerman heritage farm here in gresham oregon it was surprising to me as i did the research on the plants how many of the plants that we have actually have been around for more than a hundred years and some just, I mean, since the time of Christ and before. So learning those things really can help you determine what plants are going to be hardy and hardiest, I should say, and things you might want to grow. Another, um, another really good book is this one, A Woman's Hardy Garden. I'm having a terrible time re remembering. Um, El Ellie is the author and anyway this is another one that has a lot of information in it. it is a really nice read um, how to plant a small plot laying out a garden talks about shrubs and roses and perennials annuals um, how to do the seed bed all of those kind of things in here so these not only have a lot of fun history and the romance that goes along with it but also great tips Another classic that I fell in love with is this one right here. And it is um, Grandmother's Garden. And this spans a period of time, but there's some really wonderful photographs and plates in here, color plates that demonstrate uh, gardening throughout the years and just has some wonderful stories. And many of us who gardened with grandparents or parents will very much be able to relate to this. This goes from 1865 to 1915, so the Victorian era basically, um, which is a, an era of much romance. So those of you that love the romance, this is a good one. The other thing is you might get some ideas on how to plant things in your garden by looking at some of these old plates. Even if you're on a homestead, that doesn't mean you can't have a beautiful space. And you can take some of the ideas out of here, make them your own, use your repurposed materials, however, to create something that is similar, has the same feel, and will help to, to make your garden your own. Because after all, it is a part of your home. Your landscape, the land you live on, is a part of your home. So make it a delight to you. Uh, one thing that I have always loved is having a garden and a home that will rise up to greet you when you come in the driveway. And I think that that's really important for us, especially in this day and age when things are a little crazy out there 
and we need that place. We need to know this is home and visually that can impact us greatly. Um, we drive up, we see the familiar, the beautiful things we've invested in and the stress can just roll off of us. So I recommend that you take a look at these for that reason also. Another really good read for winter. And this book by um, Ferris Cook is a collection of um, articles by gardeners. And I really like this because you can pick it up and put it down a lot and just have fun reading it. Um, and I want to say that these aren't all just for women. I know men that read these and get things out of them, especially if they love to garden. Um, there's titles in here like Content in a Garden, Setting the Sundial. You can actually create a sundial garden, flowers that will bloom at different times of the day. Painting the Landscape. Um, we all are familiar with Monet and his ability to make beautiful landscapes uh, with using his painter's eye. And we can all do the same thing. Uh, the Garden of Lilies and Iris, the Pergola, um, and I have a pergola here which I absolutely love. It's attached to the front of my house. And it also talks about balance in the flower garden and other, other things. Jackson, you're just going to have to wait. He's being an impatient garden, our gardener. He's being an impatient cat. He's a garden cat, he's impatient. He thinks I'm his butler. <laughs> so that is Remembered Gardens by Ferris Cook. And you can get these at the library. You can probably get them online. Many of them probably read for free. Um, and then I want to give you one more. And this book is by um, the author Sharon Lovejoy. And I loved it. <laughs> um, it's called Sunflower Houses, a book for children and their grown-ups. Being a grandmother and a mother and working with children as I do, these kind of books really mean a lot to me because it speaks of how what we do with our children will produce great memories in their lives that they can take on and then use with their children. And it's really sweet. She illustrates it. She's a wonderful artist as well. Here's the cover on the book. And she talks about um, her history and things that, that she did with her with her mom and I believe her grandmother too. Anyway, it's been a while since I read this, but I've given this book and many other of her books as gifts because she's just a delightful author. And um, I am very pleased to let you know about this book. I think you'll really enjoy this. Let's see if I can find you. Oh, here we go. This is kind of fun. If you got land, you can do all kinds of things. That's Noah's garden in the heart there. This is a picture of the sundial garden. And she talks about how to do all of these things. Uh, she talks about um, the bugs in the garden. Um, let's see, some other things. Roses and birds and let me see here. Butterfly Garden, Secret Notions. She shares about how to make um, secret ink using lemons, lemon juice. If you haven't done that, that's fun. And she talks about how to make things with flowers. So this is a really fun book. There are other books too, but I have found her book to be just a delight. She even talks about, oh, this is one of my favorite ones. I love bleeding hearts. That is Princess Dicentra there. That's a, a bleeding heart, which is Dicentra spectabilis. Um, this is the one that gets the big arching branches. I don't know that it can be grown all over the country, but those of you who can grow it in your region, um, this is a great one to have when you've got kids around. Yes, it is really a beautiful little plant and produ produces beautiful stems that are also good for cutting. Just so you know, I like multi-purpose plants. Oh, and this is fun. Most of us have walnuts, the little walnut boats. I wonder if the cat's over here. Come here, what are you doing? Come here, buddy. 
You want to come say hi? Come here and say hi. See, he's not, he's not, he's not someone that, there you go. This is Halftime Jackson. He's our neighbor's cat. He has adopted us. He thinks we're his people. And he first met me in our garden, in the backyard, when we had another cat who was very territorial. And when that cat passed away, he just moved right in. He'd already decided we were his people. You need to go out the back door. He probably will eventually if I ignore him long enough. So anyway, if you have any books that you enjoy, would you please add them in the comments below? Um, and I want to thank all of you who've been commenting on my videos. Um, those of you who've offered condolences, it has meant the world to me. Um, and uh, I go back and reread them <laughs> because they warm my heart. And I know that um, I try to answer as many as I can. It's getting impossible um, with the number of subscribers I have, which is blowing my mind. And by the way, thank you, those of you who have come here for the first time and are just checking out my channel. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, please subscribe. And before you all leave, please be sure that you click that like button and share this if you know somebody who likes books or has children that might be able to benefit from these books, somebody who's a gardener. There's a lot of wonderful information out there if we just look for it. And it doesn't all come on YouTube. <laughs> I'm sharing this on YouTube, that's a little ironic, but books are a great thing and you don't, you don't need um, a device to look at them. Um, I prefer a hands-on copy versus, you know, a hard copy versus other things. So actually, I'd rather do that than read on my tablet or um, any other device. It just, there's something about it, the organic nature of it. Aside from that, um, I just wanna thank you for, for being here, for supporting this channel, for supporting me personally. And I look forward to uh, hearing some of those book ideas that you have. Yes, please, please, please share them. Um, I will be gathering them in my notes as well so that when I share with others too, I can share those along with it. I know that I am only one person and I can't know everything. <laughs> anyway, um, so from the rainy Pacific Northwest here in Portland, Oregon, thank you again. Um, and this is Patty, the tinkerer's wife, signing off. God bless.